Okay, so we are still in sections 1.6 and 1.7, and these would be examples if you're in your packet, one, two, three, um, four, and five. And we'll probably just do all of these at the same. So I picked these because, again, I think one of the hardest things for students to learn is how to differentiate between how do I know if it's a normal force, how do I know if it is a shear force, and what is the area? So this is a really good example of a bolted connection um, with a bolt, a, a bolt shank and a washer and we're in this connection and there's lots of things that could go wrong. So we have a long bolt passing through a 30 millimeter thick plate. So this thing is 30 millimeters thick. If the force in the bolt shank is eight kilonewtons, determine the average normal stress in the shank Okay, why is that the, why is this a normal, it tells us it's a normal stress, okay? So if I'm pulling in the shank and I have eight kilonewtons pulling, then in the shank I could have a normal, I could have shear, I could have bending moment, I could have torsion, but we can see it's just axial. So I can sum forces in the x direction equals zero, and I get that that normal force is equal to eight kilonewtons in tension, right? Pulling equal and opposite. So that is a normal force. The average shear stress along the cylindrical area of the plate defined by the sections AA. So if I look at where sections AA, do you see if I'm pulling this, there's a washer on it that we could just shear right through that material. <sighs> okay, shear right through it. It looked like a, like a punch, okay? So how do I know that shear? Because as I'm pulling here, these, are pushing back equal and opposite. That force that I have is parallel to that plane. So when I'm looking at AA, we're just gonna put it down here. And if I look at, okay, if this washer were to come through, then it's going through this plate. It's kind of a round area that I would be pulling through that plate, right? It would be shearing all the way um, pulling this way, we'd be, we'd have that resisting shear stress all the way around. It kind of looks like a drum, you know, with the little tie things, you know, on a, a drum. Turned it that way. Um, anyways, so if I'm pulling on this at eight kilonewtons, then we're having to resist all the way around. Our shear force all the way around has to be a total of eight kilonewtons. Okay, so then it becomes, well, what is this? this area. Well, that area has to be the thickness that I'm going to be shearing through, that thickness. So it has to be the thickness of, of, of that wall, which is 30 millimeters, and it has to be the circumference, circumference of um, that washer, which is 18 millimeters. So, um, well, the diameter is. So the diameter is 18 millimeters. So the actual part the area is going to be the circumference times the thickness of that plate. And that's how we get this whole area that comes out. Kind of like the inside of a donut hole, right? It's like the donut hole that you're cutting through. If you have the donut and you cut through the donut hole, you're literally shearing through that donut. This is like that donut hole. Okay, then it says the average shear stress in the bolt head. So again, here's the bolt. It has that hexagon kind of outside area. Here's the shank that's going into that bolt head. Well, we could end up shearing. We could end up shearing that shank out of the bolt head. Okay, so if we look at BB, that is going to be the shank. Okay, shearing out of the bolt head. And they told me it was shearing, so I know it's a shear stress, but I can also see as I'm pulling that shank out, right, that shank out, that's like the embedment length. Remember when we talked about embedment length of concrete, that if I'm pulling this way, then I have to have that resisting uh, shear, that shear force. So I know that the shear stress, okay, I know that that shear stress is coming from that eight kilonewton force. And then this area has to be the thickness of the bolt head. And then it's going to have to be the diameter here of the, um, of the shank. Okay. So I hope that makes, I hope that makes sense. 
Okay, so let's go back up here. We know it's a normal stress. It equals N over A. My normal force is 8 times 10 to the third newtons, and my area is pi over 4 D squared, 0 0.007 meters squared. Okay, and I'm going to get a very, very large number that's times 10 to the sixth, and I'm just going to call that 208 megapascal. Okay. When I'm looking at section AA, again, it's the area, it's acting sheer to that area. It's like cutting bread. It's like cutting the donut hole out of the donut. Um, so my shear stress, my shear stress is V over A. So I'm going to have V. I still have that 8 kilonewtons, okay, which is times 10 to the third newtons. 8 times 10 to the third newtons divided by... Okay, the area is 0 0.03 meters. That's the thickness. That's the thickness of my plate. And then I need the circumference. Okay, do you guys remember what is the equation for circumference? Circumference. Circumference equals, what does it equal? Do you all remember? Pi times what? pi times d, right? Circumference is pi times d. So we have pi times 0 0.018 meters, okay? So I have 8 times 10 to the third divided by 0 0.03 meters. That's the thickness, pi diameter of the washer <laughs> that could just shear right through that plate, 0 0.018 meters. So here, our shear stress across BB equals... Um, oh, that's not, that's not, that's A, sorry. I looked at the wrong picture up here, A. Um, that is going to be 4.72 megapascals, because again, I'm going to get a very, very large number, and I'm going to divide out by 10 to the 6th, okay? Now I need to look at BB, okay? Shear stress equals V over area. The shear is still coming from that 8 kilonewtons being pulled. The area... Okay, it's a shear area. It is the thickness of that bolt head, so 0 0.08 meters, times, times the circumference of that shank, pi times 0 0.007 meters. And that shear stress then equals 45.5 megapascal. Okay, kind of cool when you look at all the failure, failure things, um, like... It's, it's just really kind of cool. So we have a hydraulic punch press. It's used to punch out a slot in a 10 millimeter thick, uh, punch a slot in a 10 millimeter thick, that should say something, shears at a stress of 250 megapascals. Determine the minimum force P required um, to punch the plate, okay? So apparently I was having an issue typing. So I'm trying to punch this plate out. And this plate right here, has a stress of 250 times 10 to the 6th newtons per meter squared. That's what a pascal is, times 10 to the 6th is mega. And so I need to figure out the required force P if I want to punch um, this out of the plate. So is that shear? Is that normal? Is that shear? Is that normal? Um, I accidentally made a normal there, but it's not, right? It's shear. Why is it shear? As I punch through, I'm resisting, see those arrows pushing up all around? Okay, I'm pushing up. It's like, it's like I'm cutting through a donut. If I'm cutting through a donut or cutting through a piece of bread, you can see it's, it's collapsing right around that area. So my shear stress equals V over A. I know that that shear force is going to be caused by force P, and it's a like a one-to-one -one ratio. I push down P, my shear force is pushing back up. So what is my area? Okay, what is my area? It is the actual area around the circumference times the thickness of the plate. Okay, circumference times the thickness of the plate. So, well, it doesn't tell me because it's, you know, not a circle, how do I find it? Well, I can see I have a half circle and a half circle, and two half circles makes a whole circle. So I have the circumference of a circle plus the outside parts of this rectangle. So if I want to look at the slug like this, again, that shear force that's being resisted is all the way around. 
So it's going to be the thickness of my plate, okay, um, which is 0.01 meters, okay, and then I need the circumference all the way around, which is going to be the circumference of a total circle plus 2 times 0 0.075 meters. So let's get that written out. So my shear stress of 250 times 10 to the 6 equals that force P, because P equals V in this case, times 2 times 0 0.075 meters plus pi times diameter, 0 0.02 meters. Okay, and I can see it's meters. Area has to be a meter time meter. So now I go back and multiply by the thickness, 0 0.01 meters. And when I work this out, then I'm going to get a number, which I don't have. So hold on, so 250, let me go this way. You guys are probably gonna be faster than me, 250, where's my E button? E to the six times 0 0.01 times quantity two times, oops, I already messed up. Two times 0 0.075 2 times 0 0.07. I can't use a regular calculator and my other calculator, the batteries are dead. That is a huge issue when you're having to use a regular style calculator. Okay. This may or may not be correct, because again, I'm having to use a regular calculator, which is not my forte. So I get that this is in Newtons, and that is awful. So I could call it 532 kilonewtons, or I could call it, well, that's probably what I'll call it, 532. Um, but I don't know that I did the multiplication right. So I have pi times 0 0.02 plus, 0.15 equals times 0 0.01 equals times 250 ah, e to the sixth equals. Ah, got the same number. So we're going to call that 532 kilonewtons.